So life can be tough. I mean, school can suck, work can suck. They can be great, but they can also suck. I remember when I was a freshman in college, I had a roommate who was a senior. This dude used to make buku noise early in the morning, like 5 a.m. Like he made zero attempt to not wake me up. Then he flipped the light switch and I could hear it just we actually eventually came to blows behind this and while the short term was great, he moved out. I eventually got sent to the troublemakers dorm with nasty bathrooms, dirty hallways, an ever-present weed smell, and a new roommate who was a 300-pound defensive lineman who you could literally hear snoring from down the hall. I'm not joking at all. Perhaps I should have made the best of the first roommate. Now, all these years later, I'm looking back on the situation and thinking, I never even asked why he was getting up so early. We were on the football team, by the way. This is an upperclassman. Why is he getting up at 5 a.m.? Probably going to go work out. Me as a freshman, what I could have done was say, yo, can I get on whatever regimen this is you got going? Because he was a starter on the team. How we ended up being roommates, I don't know. But instead of me making the best of the situation, having a fire mentor, as a freshman, it could have got me on the right path, on the right track, working hard, doing all the right things. I decided to pick a fight with this guy, and as a freshman, even if you win that fight, you lose. And instead of turning that problem into an amazing opportunity, I just ended up in an even worse situation. Today's video is about Josh Freeman. Takeaway from this video is going to be make the best of your situation. Because while they may seem like they suck, things could actually become a lot worse. Usually when you just take a step back, you realize that a few minor adjustments could turn that terrible situation into an opportunity. And never forget, man, there's thousands of people who are dying to be in whatever bad situation you got going. It's people that got it worse. Anyway, let's talk about Josh Freeman. Yeah, I'm no I'm a go, I'm a go, I'm a go Josh Freeman grew up in Kansas City, Missouri, and like his father, he took the football. Josh Freeman's dad, Ron Freeman, was actually inducted into Division II College Pitt State's Athletic Hall of Fame. Coming from D2, his dad didn't make it to the NFL, but he did play professionally in the USFL. Also, Josh Freeman's younger brother would later play linebacker for the University of Missouri. What, what I'm basically trying to say is that, yo, football runs in the family. When Josh was in high school, he held 10 records for his school, passing touchdowns, completions, touchdowns in a game, etc. In three years at the QB position, he threw for over 7,000 yards and was one of the top QBs in the country. Yet somehow, the majority of his scholarship offers were to play tight end. Now he was 6'5", 225 pounds, but he was already sold on being a quarterback. And after decommitting from Nebraska, he decided to stay home and go to Kansas State. It was a great choice. And even though he didn't start right off the bat, he would eventually have an opportunity to start as a true freshman, starting the last eight games of the season. He finished with a 52% completion rating and threw for 1,780 yards, which were both freshman records at K-State. Believe it or not, he was actually the first true freshman to start for them since the 70s. But it wasn't all roses. Even though he completed 52% of his passes, he still had a horrible touchdown to interception ratio. Six touchdowns and 15 picks. <laughs> The next year, however, he cleaned it up. Threw for over 3,000 yards, 18 touchdowns, only 11 interceptions. That's better. Junior season, took another step forward. 20 touchdowns, only 8 picks. Now, I could just look at the stats and tell that the offensive philosophy did change that last year because Josh Freeman ran for 14 touchdowns which is more than three times the amount that he ran for the two seasons before that combined. Looking at his K-State numbers, I have to think that NFL teams may have been a bit too enamored with his size. While he did throw for over 8,000 yards, he threw for 44 touchdowns and 34 picks. That is not a good ratio. To be fair, he did run for 20 total touchdowns in his K-State career, so 64 touchdowns, 34 picks is better. One thing the NFL may have really taken into heavy consideration is the fact that Josh significantly improved his efficiency every single year. And that's a very encouraging thing. It means, yeah, he's got the raw talent, but obviously he's doing something right. He's gotta be working to clean up his mistakes because he's throwing less picks every season and more touchdowns every season. Not to mention his sophomore and junior seasons, he averaged out to about a 60% completion rate. It was clear when Josh Freeman was coming into the league that he was a big quarterback, strong arm, 
raw talent was gonna need some work his accuracy suffered his footwork wasn't great but again those are things that had improved especially his footwork because he had slimmed down a little bit for his junior year and his footwork seemed to improve a lot because of it josh freeman was drafted in the first round by the tampa bay buccaneers the buccaneers were not good at all during this time so they kept josh freeman on the bench for a while didn't want to expose him to that but by the time november rolled around Josh got his first start. When he finally did, he had the weight of an 11 game losing streak on his back. Now, honestly, it kind of depends on how you look at this. Because they were on that 11 game losing streak and the team wasn't very good, that means expectations weren't gonna be super high. He was gonna have an opportunity to go out there, make some mistakes and, you know, try to get things done. I will question like why they decided to start him versus Green Bay to duel against Aaron Rodgers. They had Charles Woodson and Nick Collins, like all them dudes, <laughs> Clay Matthews. Either way, they started him for this game and guess what? He threw for 205 yards, man, three touchdowns, only one interception. Also late in the fourth quarter on a fourth down, he threw a touchdown that put the Buccaneers up and they ended up winning the game. This made him the youngest quarterback in the Bucks history to start his first game and win it. His first season in the league was a lot like his first college season. He had some great moments, showed a lot of promise, but at the end of the day, he still threw more picks than he threw touchdowns. 10 to 18 ratio now again he's just a rookie on a really bad team now the following year 2010 josh freeman was named the full-time starter right from the outset and josh was going to have his best season just the fact that he started all 16 games was a big deal in itself bro no bucks quarterback has started all 16 games since brad johnson way back in 2003 we're talking seven seasons earlier yo this was the season that josh freeman showed what his potential was. I mean, an amazing year, bro. Just under 3,500 yards, 25 TDs. Guess what? Only six interceptions. That's what I'm talking about, man. Not to mention the Bucks, who was on an 11 game losing streak when he got his first start. Just one season later, he had them boys 10 and six, but unfortunately, they just missed the playoffs, man. But it's all good because the future was bright. I don't know what happened. Things don't always pan out the way we foreseen. But Josh Freeman's efficiency regressed dramatically. And so did the team's success. They went from 10 and 6, almost making the playoffs. And this is our year right here, 4 and 12. Taking a huge step backwards. And when that happens with an NFL team, you know what's coming next. They got the coach about it. So in 2011, they brought in coach Greg Schiano. Now this is where the issue started to become public. I don't know exactly what was happening before this, but this is when it started to spread and people started to actually know a little bit of what was going on behind the scenes. Stories about Josh Freeman and Greg Schiano's relationship was coming out to the media. Rumors of a rift were, were starting to swirl. It's two ways that I'm kind of looking at this and just the information on it is so small, I couldn't really come to like a definitive conclusion. So I'll just throw out one argument for each guy real quick. Now, Greg Schiano had coached college football for 10 years prior to going to the Bucks. He was coaching at Rutgers, by the way. He's that a dynasty series rugby now. Anyway, coming from that long stint in college, there's a great chance that Graciano just didn't know how to communicate and to deal with professional players. I mean, we see that all the time in college coaches. And while, yes, Graciano had worked in the NFL prior to this, man, he had only been a DB coach. And that was like 10 years before he was working with the uh, with the Bucks, because again, he coached at Rutgers for like 10 seasons. So I'm pretty sure the way he communicated with players in the NFL a decade ago would have been way different from the way he needed to communicate with players, you know, 10 years later. The league had changed a lot. And even from then to now, the league's changed a ton. Now, you can also argue that Freeman didn't make this any better. There were a few rumors of his ego being a little bit out of control. I've heard that he was partying too much. And I'm gonna stop right here. Like, again, these are rumors, bro. Like, I could not find anything definitive on this stuff. So, some of these accusations are pretty crazy. So, I want to reiterate, these are rumors. I am not trying to pass this off as fact, okay? I do not know. Matter of fact, let me know what y'all think in the comment section. But again, there was rumors that um, Josh Freeman had low energy. He was late for meetings. There's even some, some drug rumors out there as well partying way too hard rumors and just overall not taking his job seriously enough and just not being a good leader. Whatever the case, 
Greg Schiano never believed in Josh Freeman. Like he did not want that dude as his quarterback from pretty much the very start of it, and you can tell. Now again, that could be due to Freeman's lack of leadership or whatever the case may be. I'm not trying to place blame. I'm just saying it was pretty obvious that he didn't want him as quarterback. Now there are also rumors that Josh Freeman had trouble learning playbooks, but it has been said that Greg Schiano didn't give him free reign of audibles to call. He basically treated him like a college coach, man. Send him in there with two, three plays, and yo, you could pick from these. I mean, this is a guy who was a Pro Bowl alternate just two years prior. The season was a complete roller coaster ride. I mean, the Bucks had a four-game winning streak in that season, and then later had a five-game losing streak, and it's just a, a crazy season. Now, as far as offensive production goes, Josh Freeman did produce. He threw for 4,000 yards, which was the most he'd ever thrown in his career. 27 touchdowns, but midway through the season, you saw the mistakes start to raise back up, and he ended up throwing 17 picks that year. Now, here's the situation that Josh Freeman was in. He was about four years into his NFL career. People had a pretty big sample size of, of who he was. He was super young and could have really just sit back, took the coaching, whether he liked it or not, looked to improve, and work with his coach to try to get the team what it needed to be, man. Sit down, talk to him, man to man, worked on his leadership and his energy or whatever issues he may have had and also worked to keep those interceptions low. And even if that didn't work out, he still would have been being a professional. He was a super young quarterback. He would have had tons of opportunities, okay? But instead, he chose to act immaturely. Now, here's what happened next. Greg Schiano drafts Mike Glenn. At that point, Josh Freeman goes into a full diva mode, bro. As the starting quarterback of the team, he misses the team picture. Come on, bro. Then his teammates don't vote him as a team captain for the first time since he was a rookie. And that's a very telling thing. You got a veteran quarterback on your team who has been starting the entire time and he does not get voted as a captain. Guys will accept leadership from a quarterback. It's just one of them understood things on a team. That's why somebody like Deshaun Watson, man, I hate he got hurt, man. That's my dog, man. Damn. This is why somebody like a rookie like Deshaun Watson, Dak Prescott, these guys can go into a, a, a huddle and automatically command respect. It's because of that leadership and guys see them doing everything right, working hard, watching film, doing everything they're supposed to do, and then they come in there and command. Anyway, it appeared that Josh had not made the best of maybe what wasn't a perfect situation. Maybe he didn't like his head coach. Maybe his team wasn't that great, but he didn't make the most of the situation. Instead, he folded up, started pouting, skipping meetings and stuff. You just can't do that, bro. You just can't do it. It opened up the next season as the starter. But after playing pretty poorly in the first two games and the Bucks dropping to 0-2, they pulled the trigger, put in Mike Glenn. Now, like I was saying earlier, man, had Josh Freeman just taken the coaching, been mature about it, still tried to lead his team, even though his situation may not have been perfect in his mind, even though he wasn't playing great, chances are he could have ended up in a better situation. But much like me, when I was in college with the roommate situation, it actually landed him in an even worse spot, bro. Now the Vikings were only a few years removed from a Super Bowl appearance, the one with Brett Favre third to pick, Saints win a living Baton Rouge, so it was, it was crazy. But now Favre was gone, Vikings was coming off a three and 13 season. That was in 2012, 2013, team that had started the season off one and four and at this point when you're four and 17 in your last 21 games you tend to get a little bit dust also your team's probably not that good so the vice was swinging for the fences at this point now after josh got benched the buccaneers tried to trade him unsuccessfully and he eventually got released on october 6th the Vikings signed him. 10 days later, he started on Monday Night Football, bro. Now, mind you, Josh's last six games with the Bucks, he threw four touchdowns and 12 picks. So it's not exactly like the last time he was playing, he was lighting it up because he clearly wasn't. But did that stop the Vikings from starting this dude after only being in the building for 10 days? He didn't know the playbook. And to make matters worse, he didn't really seem to be putting forth the effort to even try to learn. He was showing up late to meetings. One player said it was the worst week of practice he'd ever had. Yet, Coach Leslie Frazier stood up in a meeting like, yo, great week of, good week of practice, man. Everybody was like, what? <laughs> Pretty sure Coach Frazier had pressure from the front office to start Josh Freeman. And I don't know if he was trying to prove a point, uh, like, yo, this dude can't play or what was happening. But Josh Freeman, who had been playing terribly, got benched, then released, 
then signed, then thrust into a starting spot 10 days later on Monday Night Football, threw the ball 53 times. Now, mind you, they got AP. He had 13 carries, bro. Now, they was trailing for a lot of this game, but they got AP. You know what I'm saying? In 2013, AP is still doing this thing with the Cardinals now. 13 carries for AP and Josh Freeman, who doesn't know the playbook, haven't played, just got here, throws 53 passes. It was the worst Monday Night Football game <laughs> maybe ever, bro. The game sucked. It was terrible. Out of those 53 passes, Josh Freeman completed 20 passes. But it's not just like the defense was amazing. He was just missing so many throws, bro. And again, this is largely due to the fact that he doesn't know the playbook. How can you anticipate where somebody's going to cut? He's not practiced with these receivers. This was a much worse situation than he was in with the Buccaneers. He had found himself in a position where he was looked at to be a savior, but not given the proper time to prepare. Would he have taken advantage of it if he had been given the time? We don't know, but the point is, very few quarterbacks would have been able to excel if put in a position like this. After that, Freeman went from starter to third string overnight. The very next season, that Giants team that Freeman had played actually signed him, but they signed him in April and released him in May. The next year, he signed with the Dolphins in July and was released in September. Desperate to get his career back on track, he signed with the FXFL, played a couple of games over there, and eventually did get another opportunity from the Indianapolis Colts, released after one year. Earlier this year, 2017, Josh Freeman tried the CFL but couldn't stick on a roster. And now at the age of 29, Josh Freeman's pro career may be over. Now, a lot of people look at these situations and say, hey, man, what do you mean? You may be in a fail and, you know, and, and you're, you're right to an extent. But, like, okay, I'm just saying look at the talent mixed with the opportunity mixed with what he could have accomplished, but he reacted a certain way. And now people don't even remember Josh Freeman. Like, bro, he's basically forgotten. I mean, look at somebody like Alex Smith, man. He's stuck around the league forever. He's had some really bad moments. He's been benched. He's had seasons where he didn't throw touchdowns to any receivers. But he kept the right attitude. He continued to work. And he didn't implode. There were probably times where he wanted to. But he didn't just give up. You know what I'm saying? He made the best of not so great situations. And, you know, he's still doing his thing. We could easily be saying the same same thing for Josh Freeman, I believe, but for whatever reason, he was unable to make the best of the situation. Thought he had it bad with the Bucks, went to the Vikings, got thrown into an even worse situation, put on national TV to suck in front of everyone. Now he can barely stick on the roster. Now, I ain't saying this to try to bag on Josh Freeman or nothing like that, man. Dude is obviously mad talented. He's an NFL quarterback, something many of us can never say. All I'm saying is, had he stayed professional, stayed mature, and just kind of stepped back, looked at the situation, realized, yo, it's not that bad, and stay focused, he'd probably still be in the NFL today, even if it was in a backup role. And that's just something we could all take using our lives, man. Look at your situation right now. Somebody out there is pissed off. You might not be in a perfect situation, but it could be worse. Make the best of your situation. That was pretty much the message of this video. Wow. Yeah, you never know.